All right, it's been long enough. Let's get this out in the open. Let's talk about Sabu. This is Sabu. He's an actor and a director. We've already covered him on this show, though you might not have realized it, given that he served in one of the smaller roles of Ichi the Killer. But we're not here to talk about Sabu's acting career. Rather, we're looking at his work as a director, something a few of you have requested in the past year. However, we're taking this a step further and not looking at one of Sabu's big 90s comedic fan favorites. Rather, we needed a film to cover for Valentine's Day, and we had just recently watched today's subject. Um, but Eli, it's July. Yeah, exi- wait, what? <sighs> we forgot to post this on Valentine's Day, didn't we? Well, that's alright. It's around, um, Marine Day in Japan, so that'll, uh, work, I guess? Sure. Bunny Drops started life as a manga in 2005, running for just shy of six years. The original project was helmed by Yumi Unita, author of many other manga since beginning her career in 1998. Once the manga ended its initial run in 2011, it was quickly followed up by a media blitz. This included a spin-off manga, an anime, and today's subject, the live-action film from Sabu. Given how much influence this property had on different media at this point in time, you could say 2011 was the year of the rabbit. Did you just... <laughs> The whole series concerns a 30-something salaryman named Daikichi. At the start of the story, his grandfather passes away, leaving behind an illegitimate daughter who is only six years old. No one in the family wants to care for the girl, Irin, because her mother is not legally part of their family, and the child thus symbolizes a mark on the family name. Feeling bad for Irin, Daikichi defiantly accepts her into his care, much to the chagrin of his mother. There's just one problem. Daikichi has no idea how to raise a child. This ends up providing the crux of the film's drama, Daikichi realizing he has to be an adult, while also realizing he has no idea how to care for Rin. In short, he does a lot of growing up while also helping to raise Rin. That about does it for the basic rundown of the plot. This is another slice-of-life project that doesn't necessarily concern itself with needing a beginning, middle, and end in terms of dramatic impact. Rather, Bunny Drop is more concerned with the episodic nature of Daikichi's and Rin's life together. We follow the pair as Daikichi tries to juggle his intensive work schedule and her schooling needs. With the help of his sister, a kindergarten teacher. There's a subplot about Daikichi wanting to find a romantic partner, imagining himself in music video format dancing with magazine models over and over. This takes a turn when he actually encounters one of these models, whose own son happens to attend the same school Rin goes to every day. Through these episodes, Daikichi starts to view life in a new light. He has to reshape how he explains the world when Rin asks questions about heavy topics like death. Thus, he himself learns something about how he really feels. One example being his comments about how his grandfather is still alive in his and Rin's hearts as long as they remember him. Moments like this provide some surprisingly deep scenes, giving the film a tinge of seriousness amidst the happy-go-lucky proceedings. Sort of like the optimal state of being alive. Bunny Drop might not be the most exciting watch for some viewers, given how meandering it can be in this way. However, those who can appreciate the emotional ups and downs of this type of plot will find a heartwarming tale about the troubles of growing up while building a family with others. This is helped greatly by the dynamic existing between Rin and Daikichi, who work together quite naturally. What's more, Sabu provides a notable eye for detail, present mainly in how the decor of Daikichi's house changes over time. The film itself can be over the top, and can be pretty goofy in terms of acting, but this only lends to the charming quality of the project. Unfortunately, finding this one can be a bit of a chore for those of us east of the Pacific. Bunny Drop has been released in almost all its forms over here. That is to say, the anime and the manga. This is probably given the built-in markets for these two media, which means licensing companies are willing to bring over more diverse projects. The film, meanwhile, is not officially available in America. Don't fret, however, as there are English fan subtitles floating around online. This means that if you can get your hands on a copy of the Blu-ray or DVD, anyone who speaks English or Japanese can enjoy the film. It's a real shame that Bunny Drop has not received an official release. But that's just the way it seems to go when dealing with live-action Japanese films that aren't huge blockbusters or award winners. 
Before you run off and check this one out for yourself though, there's one bit of knowledge we ought to impart. As it turns out, Bunny Drop has a specific cultural aspect which we can use to learn more about modern Japan. That being the modern Japanese working culture. One would be forgiven for thinking right off the bat that Daikichi's experience in Bunny Drop is one of idealism and that it's an exaggeration for the sake of hilarity and heart. However, we came across evidence that as far back as the turn of the 21st century, the paradigm of the salaryman was already beginning to change. For those not in the know, the salaryman is a product of the Japanese economic miracle, a class of white-collar workers who are known to live for their work. These office workers are what you might consider the stereotype of the Japanese work ethic, being so committed to their occupations that they'll put in copious amounts of overtime and give up a good portion of their lives for the sake of their companies. In exchange, they're offered a sense of security in working for one corporation more or less for life. More and more reports are emerging in recent years that, in spite of Westerners clinging to the idea of the salaryman persisting in Japan, they are in fact a dying breed. More young men and women are bucking this trend in multiple ways. First, the expectation of working for a single company until retirement has gone largely out the window. In a 2018 report, there's statement that the paradigm has shifted to stints of employment lasting five years at each position. Additionally, recent surveys show that the current generation of would-be salarymen are foregoing the extracurricular activities of work as well. Nearly 40% of men questioned by Wine Bazaar stated recently that they didn't consider themselves drinkers. Again, the Western perception is that office workers in Japan all get together after work and drink their stresses away together, though this also appears to be coming to a halt. While the elder generation of employers and salarymen seem baffled by these shifts, sources like Jcast have suggested that the salaryman lifestyle worked well in the short term for economic growth and prosperity but that it is in fact unsustainable in the long term. In other words, while young men and women began moving almost 20 years ago towards differing employment patterns, Japan was in fact witnessing the beginning of a total shift. The stereotype of the hard-working Japanese salaryman is largely an image that will die hard in the Western mind. But in actuality, there has been a slow and observable change which has allowed for situations like that seen in Bunny Drop. The supporting cast of the film see Daikichi as an odd young man for his choice to adopt a young girl, and for his want to switch employment positions for the sake of scheduling. However, the reality is that this type of dynamic is not only possible, but somewhat likely in modern Japan. It's a fascinating look at a part of Japan to which we don't often see attention being drawn. In another vein, through watching Bunny Drop, we are allowed the opportunity to consider a family system that might sound improbable in Japanese society, but in actuality does exist, that being the single father household. Considering the deep family values upheld in Japanese culture, it may be difficult to imagine single family households in the modern Japanese zeitgeist. However, not only are single mother situations part of today's culture in the land of the rising sun, single fathers are also prevalent. Single fathers in Japan may come against work-related pressures as men are often thought to be the family breadwinners and thus have no business in child rearing. We see this present in Bunny Drop as Daikichi does his best to balance his and Veen's schedules but ultimately has to make a decision to ensure an easier life for the both of them. This may be a slight nod to the fact that the traditions of Japanese fathers taking less part in raising their children is beginning to erode. In an article published by Japan Times, we can read that in 2010, there were more than 200,000 single father headed households. Of note, nearly half of these are described to be headed solely by the fathers without extended family members, such as grandparents living in the home. We can see this trend portrayed in Bunny Drop from the complete lack of assistance offered Daikichi by his family, with the exception of his sister, who arguably isn't the most supportive person she probably could be. Daikichi does, however, find support in the form of another single parent, as well as his newfound co-workers who seem to be flowing with the changing tides of family-structured traditions. Though not really expounded upon in the film, there are systems in place in Japan that offer help to single-parent families. Mothers, and at this point fathers, just another example of the changes occurring, are able to receive aid from the government when they are in low-income circumstances. Also not stated in the film, but worth mentioning while discussing the topic is that initiatives are in place to help single-parent families willing to move to small towns. This might sound strange, but when we consider the broader picture, the pieces fall into place. Japan is facing a population crisis in that there just aren't enough children being born to maintain the current population. According to the Telegraph, Japan's population is projected to decrease by about a third by the year 2065. 
If you've been watching this show for any amount of time, then you know how deeply traditional roles can run in Japanese society, especially those found in less densely populated areas. Many losses of tradition are going to be felt in rural areas, where small numbers of aging people may be the only remnants of the past. In order to help try and revive these places, there are programs designated to move single-parent families into these smaller towns often covering all travel expenses, placing the parents in working positions, and even sometimes providing the family with a car. Again, it's not something seen in Bunny Drop, but we thought it would be worth mentioning either way. In spite of unavailability in some territories, if you can manage it, give Bunny Drop a look. It's definitely worth your time, unless you're an old fuddy-duddy who can only subsist on soul-destroying films about the darker sides of humanity. Don't worry, we know you're there. And we'll be getting around to that kind of scourge again soon. If, on the other hand, you want a little happiness this time of year, hop on over and check out Bunny Drop. 